try to get my mic on it if we pause this. Okay, so I'm going to keep my paper. Check one, two. Are you going to be playing? Yeah, playing and singing off and on, maybe. I don't know. Unless you don't want me to sing. No. Yes, yeah. so I have to change this. invite everyone to rise in body or spirit. Welcome to our confirmation service. We are thrilled to celebrate with these four young adults who have brought so much of themselves this past year. They will be leading the service this evening. And so we'll begin with the lighting of the candles. And each year I ask the class who they would like to have light the candles for the holiday. And every year it's an interesting conversation. Some years it's grandparents, some years it's parents, some years one year it was Debbie. Uh, I don't even see where Debbie Haber is, but one year it was, there's Debbie hiding in the way back. Uh, this year, uh, Danny Oberman taught the class with me. And when we got to that point of who should light the candles, all four of them immediately said, Danny, it's you. And Danny looked and said, thanks a lot. Uh, 
but it is a real pleasure to be able to welcome Danny to the BEMA. Danny has been every bit a part of this whole experience with all of them and with me, and we are all appreciative of what she's done. So, Danny, please. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu L'hadlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 124 for now summer's prospect. Um, now summer's prospect, the world ripening and growing softer, the promise of harvest fulfilled, the warming sun lies before us. Now the vision of Torah, the world at peace and growing gentler, and the promise of goodness fulfilled, the lowing heart lies open to the mind. We rise in body or spirit as we join together in the Baruch Hu, page 130. <laughs> Find the words to roll into dark on the small song sheet that you picked up when you came in to the sanctuary. Roll into dark, roll into light, night becomes day.
135. Sinai was only the beginning. The Torah has never ceased to grow. In every age it has been purified and enlarged. It has a permanent core and expanding periphery. It expands as the horizon of our vision grows. Nor are God's revelations confined to Israel. God has been the inspiration of the great and good among all families of the earth. God's love and guidance reach out to all the world. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai One thirty eight. They are half Vidi Bartabam, Beshiv Techa, Bove Techa, Uv Lech Techa, Vadere, Uv Shoch Mecha, Uv Kumecha, Uk Shartam Leot, Ayo Decha, Veha Yule Totefot, Bene Necha, Uk Tam Tam, Am Mizot, Betecha, Uvi Sharecha. Leman tiskeru vasi tem et komis vatai vidi tem kiroshim la lohehem ani adonai lohehem asher hot seiti tem meretz mitzrayim liyot lahem lohim ani adonai lohehem. Please be seated. We continue on page 141. Hold fast to dreams, to dreams for, for if dreams die, die life is a broken winged bird, which cannot fly. fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field covered with snow. Hold fast to dreams. for Hushki Venu on your song sheet. Hushki Venu 
Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu ve'elohei avotinu v'imoteinu, Eloheinu Avraham, Eloheinu Yitzchak, Eloheinu Yaakov, Eloheinu Sarah, Eloheinu Rivka, Eloheinu Rachel, Eloheinu Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Ve'hanoram. El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Bekone Hakol, Bezoher Haste of Volt Vimahot, Mevi Gula live Nevenehem, Lemma and Shembo Behava, Melech Ozer Moshia Umagin, Baruchata Adunai. Agin Avraham, Vizrat Savraham, Atagi Pole Ulam Madunai, Mechaye Hakula Tarab Nevoshia, Morid Hataham, Mechakel Chaim Bechesed, Mechaye Hakul Berachamim Rabim, So who make no flim verofe holim. O mati rasurim, O mekaye he memunato, Li shane he afar. Mi hambo hamba agivurot, O mi do melach, Melech me mi hit, O mekaye, O mat mi ach yeshua. Vene emana tala hayo taha kol, Parucha taha adunai, Mechaye ha kol. Please join us on page two oh nine. Your might, O oh God, renews the earth. With the dewdrops of light and blessing, let the earth be illumined and blessed. With the dewdrops of joy and delight, let the earth rejoice and sing out. With the dewdrops of life and well being, let the earth be revived and improved. With the dewdrops of redemption, let the earth be redeemed. 
please turn to page 210. Turn to page two fourteen. You have chosen us in love and favor. By making us holy through your mitzvot and drawing us close to your service, that though uh, that through us your great and holy name may become known in all the earth, in your love, Adonai our God, you have given us feasts and gladness and seasons of joy. This festival of Shavuot, season of our receiving Torah to unite in worship and recall the exodus from Egypt. Page 223. Page 215. Oh, wait. That's my bad. 215. <laughs> one does not travel to Jerusalem. One returns, one ascends, the road taken by generations, the path of longing on the way to redemption. One brings rucksacks stuffed with memories to each mountain and each hill. In the cobbled white alleyways, one offers a blessing for memories of the past which have been renewed. One does not travel to Jerusalem, one returns. Please turn to page 216. Our God and God, God of our ancestors, ancestors be, be mindful of, of your people, people Israel, Israel, and recall our merit for good and grace, and in loving kindness and compassion for life and peace on this festival of Shavuot. Please turn to page 218. Bestow upon us the, the blessing of your holy festivals, and may we so celebrate them as to be worthy of your blessing. Our God and God of our ancestors, make us holy with your mitzvot, and let your Torah be our way of life. May our rest on this day be pleasing in your sight. Satisfy us with your goodness, gladden us with your salvation, and purify our hearts to serve you in the truth. Let your holy festival remain our heritage, and let us celebrate them with joy, so that all Israel, hallowing your name, may have cause to rejoice. We praise you, Adonai, who sanctifies the house of Israel in festivals. Turn to page 221. Know this, that, that each and every, every shepherd, shepherd has, has his own unique melody of his own. own. Know, know this, and every blade of grass has a, has a unique song of its own. own. And from the song of the grass comes the melody of the shepherd. How beautiful, how beautiful and pleasant it is when one hears their song. It is very good to pray among them and enjoy to serve the ineffable. And from, and from the song of the grass, the, grass, the heart, heart becomes, becomes filled with longing. And when the heart is filled with song and with longing for Eretz Yisrael, a great light goes forth from the holiness of the land upon it. And from the song of the grass comes the melody of the heart. Page 223. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and the blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I who have died am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and love and wings, and the gay great happening in the earth. How should tastings, touching, hearing, seeing, 
breathing and he lifted from the know of all nothing human, merely being down unimaginably you. No. We take a moment for silent prayer. Please be seated. Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Ki Atahu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Shalom Rahava Israel Amcha Tassim Leolam Shalom Rahava Israel Amcha Tassim Leolam Varech et Amcha We turn now to page 230 as we prepare to take the Torah from the Ark. We will read tonight from the Torah, from the Ten Commandments, the giving of the Ten Commandments. Um, we'll be reading this section from the book of Exodus, and our students will be each taking a share and reading uh, a little piece of the commandments. So for now, we rise in body or spirit as we join together on the top of 230. <laughs> Umem shal techa bechotor vador. Adonai melech, Adonai malach, Adonai himloch leolam vaed. Adonai ozlamo hitein, Adonai varech et amo vashalom. Av harachamim, Etiva virtsonecha et sihon. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim. Ki vecha levad bataknu. Melech Eram Venisa Adon Olamim Ki Mitzion Tetzei Torah Ki Mitzion Tetzei Torah Udivar Adonai Mirushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah, Torah, Ruk Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Leamo Israel, be Kedushato, Shema Israel, 
Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu, Kado Shemo, God Elul Adonai Iti, Une Rome Mashemo Yahachtav, Lecha Adonai Hagidula, Vehagivura, Vehati Ferret, Vehanit Sach Vehahod, Kihol Bashamayim Uvaret, Kihol Bashamayim Uvaret, Lecha Adonai Hamam Lacha, Vehamit Nase, Lecho Lerosh. Please be seated. For the Aliyah blessings this evening, I'd like to invite the parents of our four kids to all come forward. Vaida bear Elohim et kol hadivarim haela lemor. Anochi Adonai Elohecha asher hotzi techa mi eretz mitzraim mi beit avadim. Lo yehie lecha Elohim achrim al penai. Lo taase lecha fesel vechol temuna. Asher Bashamaim mi ma'al, v'asher be'eretz mi tachat, v'asher ba'amim mi tachat la'aretz. Lo tishtahave lahem velo ta of dame ki anohi adonai eloheha elkana poiked avon avot albanim al shilishim ve al ribeim. Lesson I, the Asa Hesed, La Alafim, La Ahavai, Ushumre meets Votai, Lotisa et Shem Adonai, Eloheha, Les La Shavaki, Lo Inka Adonai, Et the Sherry Saw. Et shemo la shav. Zahor et yom hashavahat le kadesho. Sheshet yamim ta'avod ve'asita ko melacheta. Ve'yom hashavi'i shabahat. Adonai Elohecha lo tase ko melacha ata uvinecha uvitecha 
Avdecha va'amatecha ufemtecha begerecha asher visharecha. Ki sheshet yamim asa aronai et hashamayim ve'et ha'aret et hayom ve'et kol asher ba'am ve'asita ba'am. Hayom hashvi al kein berach Adonai et hayom hashabat vayakadashehu. Kabed et avicha ve'et imecha. Lemaan ya arichun ya mecha al hadama asher adonai elohecha no tain lach lo tirzach lo tin af lo tignov lo taane vireacha ed shaker. Lo tachmod beit reecha, lo tachmod eishet reecha. Ve'avdo v'amato v'shoro v'chamoro v'chol asher l'reecha. Amen. To lift and wrap the Torah, we'd like to invite the brothers and sisters of our confirmands. So I know we got a couple of older brothers here and a couple of like, three younger sisters here. So if you'll all come forward and if everyone else will rise in body or spirit. Vizota Torah, Asher Samoshe, Leaf Nave and Nay Israel, Alpi Adonai, Beyad Moshe, Yalla la la la, Yalla la la la, Yalla la 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 la, Yalla la la la, Yalla la 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 la, la 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 la. Ya la 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 Ya la la la, ya la 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 la, ya la 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 la. Over the course of the year, the confirmation students and I have talked through a whole series of questions of Jewish values and Jewish perspectives on current issues of the day. 
Tonight, the confirmation students are going to share with you their thoughts on the Torah portion they just read, the Ten Commandments, and not just the commandments, but what they mean today for each of them. And so I hope you'll hear as they speak each of their own set of values as they have emerged over the past year. We'll begin with Isaac, who's going to be reading about the First Commandment. The first of the Ten Commandments states, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. The first commandment is God declaring himself as the God of the Jews, establishing his dominance and existence. It is sometimes shortened to just I am Adonai your God, but this slightly diminishes the meaning. It, spe it specifies that God and only God brought us out of the land of Egypt. This is important because one, it demonstrates God's power, and two, it shows his singularity. Removing the part about saving us from Egypt takes away from the power that God has, as well as the respect that we owe him. What the first commandment means to me is that we should respect God. Our society is built on respect, and without it we would be nothing. Respect for teachers, parents, and above all, God, is what drives us to become better, if not for ourselves and for the people we, we respect, because they respect us back. This is also present in the first commandment, as God would not have saved us if he didn't respect the Jews. The mutual exchange of respect, as well as the establishment of God as the Lord of the Jews, is the basic building blocks for Judaism. In Judaism, the second commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, refers to how Abraham's worshippers worship the true God. The second commandment condemns the worship of idols, which can take many forms. For example, when we imagine God to be something other than he is, we have broken the second commandment. The commandments help Jews to treat other people res with respect and guide Jews to love and worship God effectively. In my own words, the second commandment should be interpreted as prohibiting the creation and worship of idols or any physical representations of God. It emphasizes the importance of monotheism and the worship of God in a non-physical, spiritual manner. This commandment is central to Jewish theology and has influenced Jewish art and religious practices throughout history. The third commandment is as follows. Thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord, the thy God, in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. In this commandment, we are told to never say God's name in an inappropriate or rude way, or we will be held accountable. Growing up, I was always told at CDS to write God-D instead of writing out the full spelling because someday the paper might be thrown away and you aren't supposed to just throw away a paper with God's name on it. I have to this day kept this practice going because although I'm not the most religious person ever, I believe it is important to respect God always. Um, <clears throat> remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Judaism, the fourth commandment refers to how Jews should observe the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week, as a day of rest and spiritual reflection. It is a day set apart from worship, rest from work, and spending time with family and community. Observing the Sabbath involves refraining from work, engaging in prayer and study of sacred texts, attending synagogue services, and enjoying meals with loved ones. The Sabbath is considered a precious gift from God, a time to rejuvenate the spirit and focus on spiritual matters. Different Jewish denominations may have varying interpretations and practices regarding Sabbath observance, but the underlying principle of dedicating the day to holiness and rest remains central across all branches of Judaism. In my own words, on Shabbat, Jews should take this day as a rejuvenation period where we can relax, take our minds off work and school, and have quality time with friends and family. The commandment can be taken as seriously as a person decides. Some may choose to not completely unplug 
from regular activities and that is completely okay. The way a person celebrates Shabbat is completely subjective and if the person decides to not attend services and still use electricity, that should not be frowned upon. The main message to take from this commandment is to try to make Shabbat a day to relax and be comfortable, which is shown in various levels of how religious the individual chooses to be. The fifth commandment given to Moses by God stated, Honor thy father and thy mother, in order that thy days may be prolonged upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. When reading over this commandment, I came to the conclusion that while it can be interpreted in many ways, it's actually fairly simple. And the rest... Well, sorry. Here we go. The first, the first part of the commandment focuses on the idea that one should honor and respect their mother and father. Additionally, it shows why you should honor them and the benefits of doing so. When thinking about what those benefits were and why one would decide to honor their parents, I had to think deeply, even though it was stated directly in the commandment. By honoring and respecting our parents, our lives will be longer and we will be happier. This is similar to the saying, treat others the way you want to be treated. When we treat our parents better, in return, we receive other benefits, such as a better life and future. While the fifth commandment may look simple on the surface, I believe it is actually one of the most important commandments as it's the basis for a good and healthy life. In Judaism, the sixth commandment, thou shall not kill, refers to how it forbids direct and intentional killing as gravely sinful. The sixth commandment compels us to respect human life, which is from God and for God. The original Hebrew, lo tisra, is very clear since the verb ratzah means murder, not kill. In Judaism, abortions are not frowned upon, unlike in Christian views where Christians view abortions as murder. In Judaism, if a woman is at risk of death while giving birth, the fetus can and should be um, destroyed to save her life because her life outweighs its potential life is considered a mitzvah, a commandment to save the life of a mother when she is at risk of life-threatening complications, such as an ectopic pregnancy or an incomplete miscarriage. The Talmud characterizes, or actually not, um, <clears throat> in my own words, the sixth commandment should be interpreted as killing another human being with intent is explicitly prohibited, whereas killing someone out of self-defense or at war is not prohibited. I've discovered after researching this commandment extensively. The commandment applies to oneself, and people should treat their own bodies and souls with dignity and respect. Lastly, the commandment promotes peace and nonviolence. For instance, it encourages avoiding actions and speech that can lead to harm or violence. All right. Uh, the seventh commandment states, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is when someone in a married couple participates in a sexual activity with another person not in that marriage. Nowadays, adultery is commonly referred to as cheating and is outlawed in the Torah because it is dishonest and wrong. However, the seventh commandment has great meaning beyond just simply not cheating. It lays the groundwork for the morals and values we take into relationships, but mainly marriage. When you are in a marriage, you make a promise to that person to be devoted to them and only to them for the rest of your life. Breaking that promise is a disgrace to that person as well as God because God laid down this rule. While it is specific only to marriage, upholding this value is imperative to any romantic relationship to respect the, for the person you are involved with as well as to prepare you for marriage. Thou shalt not steal probably one of the most recognized and well-known commandments. However, those four simple words can lead to hours and even days of intense thinking about the deeper meaning of the text. The commandment explains that one should not steal, but while it does not directly list why we should not steal, I believe there are many repercussions. 
While some people may believe stealing refers to the taking of physical objects, I believe it means the taking of almost anything without permission. Whether it's taking something from a store or an idea from someone else, stealing doesn't only hurt yourself, but it also harms the person or place you are taking it from. Stealing can cause suffering to those around you and your community because there is no trust or safety. It can also lead to you being looked down upon. When thinking, about, when thinking through all the possible meanings of the Eighth Commandment, I decided that this is one of the, the main commandments responsible for holding together families, communities, and even countries, since it provides safety, trust, and so much more. The Ninth Commandment states, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This means primarily to not tell lies about people you know. Bearing false witness means to knowingly lie about something or to spread false rumors, and, is, and this commandment tells us it is not right to do so. This concept is further supported in the U.S. justice system. Lying in court or providing false witness is a very serious crime. When the commandment says against thy neighbor, it could mean the person who lives next to you or even just someone you know. But I like to interpret it to mean any person anywhere, because if you think about it, we are all human and we all have the common interest of keeping humanity alive and more importantly, holy. We are united in our humanity and our belief in God, so in a way, we are all neighbors. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. In this commandment, we are told to steer away from jealousy and envy. When I was younger, I, would al I always would look at what other people have. This kid had an iPhone. This kid had a cool pair of shoes. I would beg my parents to buy me the cool things that other people had. I never understood until later to just be grateful for everything that I have already. So over the course of the last year, how many different values did you pick up that they picked up on and that they discussed? 10, 20, 30? We had wonderful conversations week in and week out. We had dinner together every week, which itself was an interesting ethical dilemma from time to time. How many McNuggets should one eat? I won't say which one won the award, but one clearly won the award for that one. The experience of learning with each of these four young adults was an extraordinary gift for me, and I think I can speak for Danny at the same time, for her. What they didn't re quite realize over the course of the year was that they were teaching us just as much as we were teaching them. In fact, they were probably teaching us more. Because I walked in with a set syllabus, and every week I would sit down with Danny and we would talk about what we were going to teach that week and how we could do it differently and what we could do better, and each week we'd walk into the classroom with them or sit down at the table in the auditorium with them. And each week they would take us in a new direction. Most of the time a direction that neither Danny nor I had predicted. And so part of it was just being quick on our toes. Part of it was being able to say, okay, let's run with this and see where it goes. But part of it also was recognizing their growth week in and week out and recognizing how these things were working through their minds and their souls. And we did all of that in the context of a pretty difficult year for us as Jews. This was not an easy time to be a Jew by a long shot. And while we discussed the challenges of the world and the challenges going on in our own country, what we saw, what I saw, was young adults wrestling, trying to make sense of it all, trying to figure out not just what was their place, but how they could make the world more whole. And my sense standing here tonight is they've already begun to do that in their thoughts, in their actions, in their interactions. They have understood what it means to lead a better life, to lead a life where there is room for the other. There is always room for the other. To see that God commands us, yes, but even more, we are commanded to share, to work together, to live in community. And the four of these young adults are shining examples of what our world can be at its best. 
I'd like to invite now to come forward to the Bema, Steve German, the president of our congregation, who will help me pass out some gifts and some certificates to our students. So for each of our students, we have a Hebrew English Tanakh, a Bible uh, that is one that is paperback, so it's relatively easy to carry around. If one of you gets sworn in as a judge someday, this is a great Torah to be sworn in on. And if you invite us, we'll come and be there with you. Uh, and there's a certificate inside each of them uh, that says the certificate of confirmation. This is to certify, in this case, that Solomon Donner was confirmed in the faith of Israel on June 11th, 2024, the 6th of Sivan, 5784, in the presence of Temple Sinai, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and it has signatures from me and from the cantor and from Steve and from uh, Regina, who is our religious school director. So Solomon, this is for you. The next one is for Madeline Half. Oh, Madeline, that is for you. That is for you. And the next is for Isaac. These are for you. And the last is for Sam. Sammy, that's for you. And you'll note that you all got autographed copies of the Torah which is not the easiest thing to figure out how to do. Exactly. So mazel tov to each of you. Thank you for being a part of our confirmation class. We look forward to celebrating and learning and growing with all of you in the years to come. A special word of thanks to the parents of our confirmation students. Each of you trusted us to teach your children, to learn with your children. And we thank you for the gifts that you have provided for us we thank you for the opportunity to share and learn and grow with your kids. And I can assure you, we aren't done yet. We turn back now to our prayer books. We'll turn to page 322. We invite everyone to rise in body or spirit for Aleinu Shabbat. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol L'atzeh kidula l'yotzeh reshit Sh'lo asam higui ha'ratzot V'lo samalu k'mishpechot ha'dama Sh'lo sam chelkenu kahem V'gor aleinu k'chol ha'monam V'anachnu k'horim Umishtachavim umodim Lifnei melech machi hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu V'ne'emar v'haya Adunai Limelech al kol haaretz Bayom ha'hu, bayom ha'hu Yihye Adunai echad Ushemo, 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 Echad. We continue now with the words of Mourner's Kaddish on page 334. Please join with us. Yitgadal, Yitkadash, Shemei Rabba, Be'alma, Divra, Hirute, Vyamlich, Malchute, Bechayechon, Vyomechon, Vchayed, Hobet, Israel. Ba'agalav v'izman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shmei rabam v'arach le'alam lome amaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yipa'ar v'yitromam v'yitmaseh. V'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shmei dekudasha b'richu. Le'ela min kol b'yirchata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechemata. Da'amiram b'yalma v'imru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya. V'chayim aleinu v'yalcho Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'romav, hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu v'yalcho Yisrael v'imru amen. There is one last little gift that this class is going to give to all of you by way of 
the music of the last piece that we're going to do together. Before that, let me bring the four of you together. Come back this way a little bit. This class never quite got the full experience of a bar mitzvah with the whole congregation. This is the COVID class or one of the COVID classes. And so I wanna take the opportunity now to give you the blessing that you would have received on the bima at your bar or bat mitzvah. Yivarecha chadunai v'yishmarecha. May God bless and keep each one of you. Yoer adunai panave lecha v'yichunecha. May God's face shine upon each of you and be good to you. And may you reflect that holiness back in the sparkle of your eyes, in the sweetness of your words, and in the kindness of your actions. May God's face always shine upon you. May you know good long lives, lives of health and purpose, lives of value and love and laughter and joy and family and friends, and most especially, lives of peace. Amen. Amen. Mazel tov. Cantor, let's take it. This is Adon Alam, as you've never sung it before. <laughs>
Oh 